Deuteronomy 2.24. Kumu se'u ve'ivru et nachal arnon. Re'e natati be'yadicha et sichon melech heshbon ha'emori. Ve'et artso. Hachel, rash. Ve'hit garbo milchama. So if we begin here at the top, we have rise up, set out, and cross over. So we've got three imperatives here. They're all two MP imperatives. First, we have the root kum. Then we have the root nasa. Notice the one noon flees in the call imperative. And then the third one, we have the root avar, cross over. So rise up, set out and cross over. Then we get the direct object marker, the wadi arnon. Another imperative comes in here with the call imperative 2ms of the root ra'a. And this functions similarly to something like a hene. So we get behold, or look. I have given into your hand, the verb here is the call perfect 1cs of the root natan. Notice the third noon is represented by the dagesh there. I have given into your hand, direct object marker here, sichon. And sichon is further defined appositionally by the king of Heshbon and the Amorite. Those are both true of sichon. Get a second direct object that's listed now as his land. So I have given into your hand sichon and his land. Then we get more imperatives, a slew of imperatives here. Begin, possess. Here we have the hifil imperative. This is the 2ms of the root halal. Oftentimes means to profane, but it can also mean to begin. And here that's what it is. Begin, possess. Call imperative 2ms again of the root yarash. Notice the one yod functions similarly to a one noon, and it flees in the imperative. And oftentimes this rosh is taken as an infinitive, so we would get something like begin to possess. And in fact, the Vulgate and the Septuagint both use infinitives right there, but you get the idea. I like Hebrew a little bit better in the sense of just the quick begin, possess. Then we get and contend or and stir up strife. Here's the hith pael imperative of the root gara, stir up strife with him battle or in battle.